Good morning. My name is Michelle McClelland, and I will be your cantor this morning. Today's Mass is being offered for all the living and deceased members of the parish. Today we also celebrate the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and our celebrant this morning is Father Mac. Please join me now in singing our opening hymn, number 613, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven, number 613. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with the Spirit. Perhaps by now you have heard the news that Father John Petrarillo, longtime pastor of St. Vitus Church, has passed away, passed on to God on Friday. I was blessed to be able to speak with him on Thursday and I'll tell you more about that later. Also, uh, Father Frank Almaid, who is recovering from cancer, spoke to him as well, and I'll tell you a little more of that as well. But let us keep them in our prayers, all of our beloved living and deceased, trusting in God's gift of everlasting life as we place before him our cares and concerns, trusting in his mercy. Lord Jesus, you're a mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Thank you. 
And we welcome Father Cassian, who is a newly ordained priest of St. Vincent's Abbey, the Benedictine Fathers, and a good friend of our seminarian over here, our young man Chris Baker. So we're grateful to have both of them in our midst for this Holy Mass this morning. And of course you know Deacon Dan. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who taught by the Holy Spirit that we should dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we might enter into the inheritance which you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree, but then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. Elijah looked, and there at his head was a hearth cake and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him, and ordered, Get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. He got up, ate, and drank, then strengthened by that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God, Horeb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Taste and 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, and reviling must be removed from you, along with all malice. And be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another as God has forgiven you in Christ. So be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to John. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? Then how can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, Stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, They shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him, comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen. Amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Do you realize that we are always in a battle between God and false gods. 
Elijah in the first reading, we catch him after he has just defeated over a hundred false prophets of Baal, the pagan god. He just did battle with them and he won. And now the king and the prophets are mad and they want to kill him. So he flees from them. And he is exhausted from fleeing from them. And then he says, Lord, just take me. He's exhausted, he's disgusted, and he's ready to quit. Have you ever felt that way? But he just beat, defeated, disgraced the false prophets through the power of God. How can he be discouraged? How can he want to give up? Because like him, we so quickly forget how God has just saved us from our last crisis when we become discouraged and ready to give up. St. Francis de Sales once said, when you are afraid and discouraged because of some present trial, stop for a moment and think about the last trial you experienced. The same God who saw you through that difficulty will see you through the present one. So Elijah is ready to give up, and what does God do? He sends him spiritual food. Not human food, not food that we can make, but this special bread from heaven and drink. And the angel tells him, unless you eat and drink this, you're not going to be strong enough to complete your journey. He's ready to give up, but God had more work for him to do. So he believes and he eats and drinks and he's strengthened by this spiritual food and he's able to complete the journey think of all the false gods of the Romans the Greeks and our modern day false gods who are the false gods well you got political people you have entertainers I mean Hollywood is full of gods you have the mega wealthy want their influence known we have sports figures statues to them everywhere those who advertise because their word and what they think is more important than what you think oh there are a lot of false gods why are they attractive? Because they're like us, they're sinners. The false gods are all sinners. They can be evil. They can be deceptive. The gods of the Romans and the Greeks, they were jealous, envious, vengeful, violent. But the true God it's a God of love. False gods are made in our image, our broken image. We are created in the image of the true God, but it takes His nourishment to help us to live up to that because He is love, and His love is self-giving. None of the false gods gave themselves to us as food. Do you realize how intimate a gesture that is? To consume our God. To become one with Him as food. 
so that we might become like him, strengthened by his body and his blood, to be love in our world, to be self-giving and self-sacrificing. St. Paul tells us, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit prompts you and me to do the right thing, to act out of love and self-sacrifice. I'm very grateful to the Holy Spirit prompted me the other day, and I know it was the Spirit that did it, to call Father John Petrarola. I had to call the diocese to get his number. I tried to reach him at St. John Vianney. They gave me a cell phone, and miraculously, he answered the phone. He knew who I was. I thanked him for his service to our parish. I told him of our celebration last evening for the school and the 113 years in our midst. Invited him to come. He appreciated the invitation. I could tell in his voice he was labored in his breathing. We had a wonderful conversation and reminisced of the days over 20 years ago when I was here before and used to come and help with penance services and we'd have delightful conversations. Then after that call, shortly, I received a text message from a nurse who was in his room who happened to be a former parishioner of mine who said, I was in the room when you were talking to Father John and you made him so happy. And so I was very surprised the next morning to get the message that he had passed. What a gift from God to be able to have had that conversation. I also called Father Frank Almaid see how he was doing and to assure him of our prayers and his battle with multiple myeloma the bone marrow which is the same cancer that took my mother 10 years ago today but he seems to be in good spirits he said he's hopeful to get a stem cell transplant and he's pretty tenacious about it so I assured him of our prayers. You probably don't realize this, but every time we priests celebrate Mass here, Father Frank strategically placed his picture right in the doorway. So he's always looking at us as we celebrate Mass. The divine providence of God. There is a dying and rising in life a letting go and the daring to trust in the journey as it continues. Just with the closing of our school and the new promise of a new way to do Catholic education from preschool all the way to high school with our partnership in Hermitage. We have to be open to what the Lord puts before us and not think that we have all the answers, but to trust in the prompting of the Holy Spirit to act and to be nourished by His divine sustenance. How long can you go without eating or drinking? It's, it's difficult to fast. I find it always challenging. It seems that I'm always hungry. And probably hungry for the wrong foods, like ice cream. But it seems that we are so 
easily able to fast from spiritual food. In fact, that may be the first thing that goes off of our schedule. Time spent in prayer, easily not a high priority. The effort to attend Mass and receive the body and blood of our Savior while we're on vacation, or it's too early, or it's too late, or it's in the wrong place, or it's at the wrong time, or I really don't feel good today. How many times have we skipped Mass but not skipped a meal? And yet the prophet is told, get up and eat, else you will not have strength to make the journey. Father John lived to be 93 years old. That was a long journey. But he was sustained along the way by spiritual food. And so can we. Don't be discouraged. Don't be overcome when life seems to be too challenging. Or we're not quite sure of the future. Be open to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Be strengthened by spiritual food of sacrament and word and trust in the Lord and get up and complete the journey. We are all in this together and we have plenty of work to do. This parish of Holy Spirit in Lawrence County is not dead by any means. We have a long way yet to go. So we better rest up, eat the food that sustains us, and get busy about the work of building God's kingdom. Not our kingdom, but His. I believe in one God, the Father of God, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life to the world to come. Lord Jesus, we give you praise and thanks for the gift of yourself in this Holy Eucharist. Increase our faith and trust in you as we place before you our cares and concerns. For the Church, as the mystical body of Christ, may she grow and prosper in the Lord's saving work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who are serving in government and civic leadership, may the Lord give them hearts of compassion and wisdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
as we remember Holy Spirit Academy and the contribution of Catholic education in Lawrence County this weekend, we thank God for the past and we look forward to the future with great hope as we partner with St. John Paul II and Kennedy Catholic Family of Schools. May God bless our efforts to bring our children to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us here, may the Lord help us grow in compassion toward one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dearly beloved, and especially for John Petrarulo, our previous longtime pastor of St. Vitus, and for the living and deceased members of the parish. May they soon bask in the internal, eternal light of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pause to add our own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now together pray our parish prayer. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, you told us where your, your treasure is, is there, there your heart is also. also. The, the parish of Holy Spirit treasures our faith, our faith in you, our, our children, and every person who gathers you. Help, Help us, us to have, have the courage to sacrifice, to, sacrifice, to love, and to, and to build in your name. name. Guide, Guide us by your spirit of wisdom, give success to the work of our hands, and keep us in your peace. Saints, martyrs, and Mary, our mother, pray for us. Amen. Please join me in singing our offertory hymn. Number 941, Eat This Bread. Number 941. my sisters and brothers that we ourselves and these gifts we offer be acceptable to God our Almighty Father the 
Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offering of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power to transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Jesus our Lord. And so with all the angels and saints, we raise our voices in a song of praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and always walk with us on our journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, and when we gather by his love, as once for his disciples, so now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of your beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. For on the day he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim your love until he comes again and offer you the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Look with favor on this oblation of your church in which you show forth the sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant by the power of your spirit and your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity as members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church of Holy Spirit by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful, their pastor, together with Francis our Pope, David our Bishop, the Order of Bishops. Then in a world torn by strife, 
your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and peace. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. dare to pray in the words of our Savior, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant us peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. With the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the risen Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. And let us offer one another some sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy so that you should enter onto my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. The body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life.
Please join me in singing our communion hymn, number 950, Take and Eat, number 950. Take and eat, take and eat. 
And I invite our little ones who have not yet received First Holy Communion to please come forward for a special blessing. We are reminded all the time to trust in the Lord and step out in courage. And we give thanks to him for his divine providence as things unfold. When it was announced that we are needing to close the school, there were a lot of anxieties and fears, particularly for our teachers and staff of the school. But I'm very pleased to say in God's mercy and love, in Providence, all of our teachers and all of our staff have found new jobs. God is very good, and we have to always trust in Him. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your May Almighty God bless you and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharist is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Please now join me in our closing hymn, number 636, Now Thank We All Our God, number 636. Sponsorship for this program provided by the Ed and Don DeCarbo Funeral Home and Crematory Incorporated with two locations, 941 South Mill Street, Newcastle and 3000 Wilmington Road, Neshanic Township.